should go. What is going on? It is Obscurist Tourist here once again. And once again, I come to you from Ontario, Northern Ontario, somewhat Gravenhurst, Ontario, here on a windy day in November. And Gravenhurst, Ontario is actually a place that I hold very, very close to my heart because it is where my grandparents lived and they moved here after World War II. So I spent a lot of time here as a, as a child, as a teen, as a kid growing into his own up here in the bush. And behind me, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a few, a few abandoned buildings and a few abandoned houses. And behind those is the abandoned Muskoka Sanatorium, which was left and closed down in around 1994. So we're gonna check that out today. Apparently, it's very haunted. And not surprising considering that it became an insane asylum in the 1960s. So let's go check it out and see what we can find and maybe get a few frights along the way. Who knows? You can see the decrepit old baseball diamond and I'm not really sure if that would have been used by patients here or staff. Either way, this place is quite a contrast. It looks very creepy, bleak, and uh, almost like a set of a horror movie, rather than the location on a beautiful peninsula up here in stunning cottage country. And there you can see an old sign which lines an even older road that leads further and further into this sprawling complex. And in the distance you can see a smattering of some of the old administrative offices that the staff would have either lived in or worked in. I don't know why, but these houses and these structures really remind me of uh, some of the plantation houses that I've stumbled upon down south. Super, super creepy. I don't know why there's just something ominous about these particular structures and probably much, much newer structures as well definitely not built in the 1800s or early 1900s, more like the 1940s, 1950s. And I noticed that these buildings all have a little red alarm lighting on the outside of them, and I'm not really sure what that's all about. And I have to admit that if I am getting these sorts of weird vibes from buildings that are not nearly as old as the main hospital building, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited to get on over to the other side of this complex and check it out because these things right here are giving me severe heebie-jeebies. Yeah. No joke. The history of the now abandoned Muskoka Sanatorium spans over 120 years with its origins firmly planted in 1897. And it was in 1897 that Gravenhurst, Ontario became home to the third tuberculosis sanatorium in the world, the Muskoka Cottage Sanatorium. Now, medical experts preferred Muskoka for a variety of reasons, including the fact that its climate and moderate elevation was thought to provide 
more oxygen to patients, and aid in recovery and treatment. And though the setting of the sanatorium is beautiful, that aesthetic advantage is more a side effect of this location's other purpose, which was isolation. You see, in Ontario, sanatoriums were often located outside of major city centers, due in part to tisiophobia, or in layman's terms, a fear of tuberculosis. At the time, there was a significant social stigma surrounding these institutions, and it became an integral need to keep such places as far away from the general public as possible and hidden from view. Out of sight, out of mind, as they say. As modern treatment and prevention of tuberculosis became more prevalent, the requirements of the traditional isolation sanatoriums waned. This had a domino effect and resulted in decreased occupancy at the Muskoka Hospital during the late 1940s and continued on throughout the 1950s. Meanwhile, a counterbalancing phenomena in the field of mental retardation began demanding increased care and treatment space. In 1960, the 62-acre site, which sits on a rocky peninsula jutting out into Lake Muskoka and the existing structure, were acquired by the Ontario Department of Health as an extension of the Ontario Hospital School at Aurelia. In 1973, the facility treated and housed 305 female patients between the ages of 16 and 80 years old, with a total staff of about 300. Sadly, the Muskoka Center closed in 1994, though it remained in use somewhat for other reasons until the following year in 1995. Just over to the right here are the old remains of the bocce court that was used by residents here. And I can't imagine that being institutionalized in the 40s or 50s or even 60s was any fun, but I'm sure getting outside and partaking in a game of bocce would have provided at least some sort of positivity to an otherwise terrible existence. Now that I'm here, I'm quite surprised at the sheer amount of outlying structures on the property, other than the main hospital building. And I'm sure that these were sort of on-site residences for some of the doctors and nurses and as I'm looking up this ridge, I can see there are even more buildings up there. And I'm pretty excited to get up and over and see what we got. And this building here looks to have been built around the same time as the main hospital building. And I'm going to guess here that perhaps sicker patients were segregated and put up here in extra rooms to keep them away from the general population patients in the main building. But let's get real. I'm not a doctor. What do I know? Yeah, so I'm not even going to attempt to guess what this creepy boarded up building functioned as, but I can confidently say that the building behind it was used as a garage for on-site repair and general maintenance of machinery and everything else that needed tending to here on the hospital property. Oh, hello, sad, lonely chair. Don't fret. You've got company now.
This deceased lawnmower looks like it cut its last blade of grass a long time ago. And well, clearly they are keeping up with maintenance still to this day. These boards that are keeping us out look to be fairly new. In fact, I would guess that they were put up in the last day or so. I've been trying to look for an opening to get into these buildings, but as of yet, I've not been able to find one. And I will assure you that there is a vast, vast difference between trespassing and breaking and entering. And I refuse to do the latter. So we're gonna try to do this the somewhat right way. Just walked around to the back of this building closer to the forest's edge and found a lot of old rusted things like an old filing shelf. An old trailer and a few other things from a time long, long ago. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but there is hammering going on. And when I said that the boards were put up over the past couple days, I may have been a little wrong in that assumption because I think they might have actually been put up today. Wow, this does not look like a murder shed on any level, now does it? And, in all honesty, it isn't. It is actually a pump house. The old pump house that provided and helped to circulate H2O to the hospital and perhaps the wing closest to this. It always blows my mind, never fails to amaze me how quickly things can deteriorate and disintegrate the moment that people stop maintaining them. And this pump house is a perfect example of that. All metal and iron. I mean, this place has only been closed for 25, 26 years and just, just look at it. So there's a, a couple guys, caretakers, I suppose, who are boarding up the windows here at the sanatorium to keep the hooligans and the ruffians at bay. You can see their car right over my right shoulder. So if they've boarded everything up, I'm not really sure if we'll be able to make it in, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can go talk to them. I don't know if they're going to be too friendly, though, but we'll see. So I'm uh, hiding in the forest here because some nut bar just entered the property and started shooting a gun. I heard about five or six gunshots very, very close to me. So I'm a little freaked out. Hence why I'm hiding in the forest. He's lurking around up there somewhere. It's kind of weird. Good thing I have my camouflage on to try to avoid detection. Perfect outfit for avoiding being shot. So hopefully we get out of this alive. It's kind of hard to see in the distance but way over there underneath that giant pine tree are a couple of OPP cruisers and some police officers on foot and a few 
Please, dogs, which is kind of terrifying. In my attempt to avoid detection by the OPP, I slid down this rocky embankment closer to the shore and found this building. And guess what? I found an open door. So let's take a peek inside and, and see what we can find. So this is quite ominous, and a very, very sobering reminder of what this facility actually is. As you can see, I have gotten a lot closer to the main hospital building, and as I walk further along, I found something familiar that I often find in these situations, and that is some graffiti of a giant penis. It really is like stumbling into an old friend. And I have to admit that I really needed some light-hearted fare after seeing that abandoned walker just a little while back. Ever closer still to the main building, and the more I explore, the more I realize I arrived a day too late, because it looks like all of the open entrances that were here yesterday have all been boarded up today, and are currently being boarded up as I stand here now. Ministry vehicles only and a little arrow that points down to what else? Another road. Just look at the sheer size of this building. I don't even think that the video or any of the pictures that I've seen do this any justice. It is just a massive structure. Amazing that it's just sitting abandoned here in the Canadian wilderness. I don't know if the microphone is picking this up, but I am getting closer and closer to the voices and probably the workmen putting up these boards here on the windows and the doorways. I don't think it's the police. They, I assume, have gone, but still got to be careful. Have you ever seen any creepier looking broken windows? I don't think I have. If toxic green moss is your thing, then you certainly have come to the right place. The Muskoka Sanatorium. The Muskoka Hospital. And just over here, a few hundred feet to the right of the main hospital building, sits the Joss house gazebo and it provided a place for patients to relax and picnic next to picturesque muskoka bay i mean let's get real who wouldn't want to sit out here kick back relax put up your feet and stare out at this absolutely beautiful scene here on lake muskoka and this gazebo right here, the Joss House Gazebo, 
was actually recognized by the Ontario Heritage Trust as a proud reminder of the significant role that Gravenhurst played in the fight against tuberculosis. Unlike the rest of the structures here on the property, the gazebo actually is an anomaly because it looks to be in fantastic shape and clearly they are still maintaining and taking care of it as a whole. I'm going to go down the last unexplored section of the main hospital building and I'm getting a little bit nervous because I know that with every step I'm getting a little bit closer to the workmen and I have no idea where they are but I know I know they're close I can feel them and I can hear them every once in a while still I uh, have not found a way in to the building but that's okay I get quite enamored by just the external aesthetics of an old abandoned place so I'm not terribly disappointed just look at this place it's amazing and I gotta say this is not the sort of stairway that you want to toil with on a frigid and icy day you could go from zero to broken neck in one step or less I have to say that I am genuinely curious as to how much money the city spends a year trying to keep ruffians and explorers out of this building. The maintenance guys have done an absolutely wonderful job. I've circumvented this entire building and still have not found any entryway that hasn't been boarded up. Pretty good. Give them a raise, Muskoka. This is a bit of a confusing message basically telling us that they've been trapped here for 50 years, but also inviting us in? What? Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get inside this magnificent building behind me but it's better to be safe than sorry and with that it's obscurest tourist saying so long take care of yourselves and most of all stay beautiful until the next adventure <laughs>